Welcome everybody, I'm Ted Pedromo. And if you do me a favor, in the chat window, type in your biggest LinkedIn challenge. We've got a lot of people joining us right now, so as they join, we'll get a little conversation going. But if you have questions throughout the webinar, feel free to just type them in there, and I'll be pausing at different stages to answer your questions, and we'll do a big Q&A session at the end. Okay, let's jump into this now. Thanks for those questions. I got lots of them coming in, so we'll, I'll get to those at one of our breaks here. But as you know, LinkedIn has really made a lot of changes in the last couple months. They've totally changed their interface. It's still rolling out to some people, but a lot of the features are still there. They've just moved to different places, and other features are gone, which is kind of disappointing because they had some nice features that were very useful. Let's jump in and get rolling. So today, I'm going to talk about the LinkedIn opportunity because LinkedIn is really hitting its stride right now. People are really understanding that they need to be on LinkedIn. They can't just put their resume up there and ignore it. They really need to interact with that. Then I'm going to take on a tour of the new LinkedIn dashboard, show you where everything is, where I found it. Even some days, things are still moving around for me. I'm discovering new things every day. So I'll share everything I know about LinkedIn right now. And then I'm going to teach you the LinkedIn Ninja strategy. This is how I get over 100 targeted leads every week for free. So it's, it's really amazing. There's some really hidden features in LinkedIn. And I'm going to show you some of the things I've discovered. Some of them by accident, but they work really, really well. And then we have a bonus for people that stay to the end. I'm going to be offering free profile reviews for three people. You have to pay attention because I'm going to ask a really challenging question at the end, and the three people that answer it correctly will be winning a free profile makeover. So how many people here don't have time for LinkedIn? Type it in the chat window if you have that. Say, I just don't have time to do all this social media stuff. I don't have time for LinkedIn. It just doesn't work for me. And here's the other biggest complaint I hear. I'm on LinkedIn, but I have no idea what to do next. And this is because LinkedIn's evolved from a resume site years ago. Now it's a very interactive business networking site. So I'm going to take you through the features of LinkedIn and show you how I use it to build my network and build relationships and really kind of have a steady flow of leads. So here's the opportunity on LinkedIn. You've probably heard some of these stats before, but they're changing or some of them are pretty staggering now. So there's over 350 million members are adding two members every second still and that's been going on for a couple of years now. I've heard even up to 370 million. LinkedIn a couple times a year they released their official stats but the last official one was 350 million. So 68 percent of business to business marketers have acquired a customer through LinkedIn and if you've acquired a customer through LinkedIn, type it in the chat when I'd love to hear your story and what it was worth to you because people are really figuring out how to use LinkedIn to get more business. And here's why you really have to be on LinkedIn and have a complete profile. 77% of LinkedIn members are going to look at your profile before they do business with you. So if you have a partially finished profile, it's kind of like half building a website. If you're company website was just partially built and had one of those old under construction signs on it. What do people think about your business? Now they're coming and looking at your LinkedIn profile, so you need to make that really good first impression. Here's another stat I read in Forbes about six months ago, nine out of 10 C-level executives are using LinkedIn at least once a week for an hour. And everybody says really executives don't use LinkedIn, they don't use email, their assistants may use it, but 
here is proof that it does work. This was in Business Insider last month. Michael Dell was interested in meeting this guy who was a Cisco engineer. He was one of the top engineers at Cisco designing computer routers. And he left and started his own company. So Michael Dell wanted to connect with him. So he sent him a LinkedIn message. He didn't call him. He didn't try to go through his normal email. He sent a message to him. And it actually took three emails through LinkedIn for the guy to actually believe it was Michael Dell. And now they've established a business relationship. And it's all because Michael Dell heard about this guy and looked him up on LinkedIn. So very high level executives are using LinkedIn. They're seeing the value in it. Can everybody hear me? Okay, I've got somebody said their audio stopped. So if you can hear me, just type yes in the chat window. So here's some more options. Half of B2B buyers have used LinkedIn to support their purchase decisions. So they're going to LinkedIn to research companies. They're going to research people they're going to do business with. And what's amazing is C-level and VP-level people 63% use LinkedIn to support their buying decisions now. So if you don't think LinkedIn is the place to be, you really need to start paying attention. So here's something that's really important. In this survey, this is from IDC, International Data Corporation, so it's a very reliable source. 76% of people prefer to do business with vendors who have been recommended by someone I know. It's kind of like if you're trying to find a new dentist, wouldn't you like to get a recommendation, a word of mouth referral before you do that? And years ago, my wife and I moved from San Francisco. We got married and bought a house north of San Francisco. So we went to this dentist that he was on the prominent corner in town. We didn't know anything about him, so we started going there. And he was like the worst dentist in the world. He had all these televisions and he got headphones. He listened to music, all these distractions because he was a horrible dentist. So after a couple of visits, we decided to get, you know, ask some people, who do you go to? And now we've been with the same dentist for over 25 years. So everybody wants word of mouth referrals. So what's new on LinkedIn? Now, if, has everybody seen this new interface? It's been rolling out for, I'm not sure, about a month or so. But I logged in one day and I was like, wow, this is very different. And they're going to a very modular approach. And you can see you know, all, a lot of the features are still there, but things have just really moved around in different places. So here's one thing that changed. It's kind of, this one's kind of frustrating for me. When you click on the little icon at the top right, when you have notifications, you have invitations there. And you can just hover over it and you can say X for no, check mark for yes. And it's nice because then you can just accept someone's invitation. But once you do that, they shift you to a different screen. Instead of just letting you go down the list, they actually take you to this screen. And then there's pending invitations at the top, which it's just it's something to get used to. But I kind of like the idea of going down the list. I'm getting used to it now, but just those little subtle changes, they're trying to make it more efficient. So here, below that, if I want to connect with other, so the people you may know is a very important, it's part of the algorithm of LinkedIn, and what it does, it takes all the information in your profile, all the people in your network, your industry, and say, based on that, these are people you may know or want to connect with. So what you can do is just hover over this and you guys should connect directly here. And I've had a mixed experience here. Sometimes I click and it sends the invitation. I can't customize it. Other times it asks me, you know, I'm a friend or we work together or we colleagues. So it prompts me for that question. And if it does prompt me for that question, it only asks me once. Then I can go connect with other people just by clicking. And I always like to customize my invitations in the past, but now even on the mobile devices, you can't customize connection requests. It just automatically sends that message. And I found it really hasn't degraded the number of connections I get. I don't get a lot of people not connecting with me, so 
people don't seem to care about the custom message as much anymore. And if you have a you know, experience with that, type it in there. We can talk about that because that I always thought that was a big thing to start establishing the relationship by customizing the message, but LinkedIn doesn't seem to think that matters anymore. So here's how another thing they've added is you can when people your connections like your first level connections have new connections they say Nikos has a new connection and you can actually connect with that person right there by just clicking so it helps you they always have, I've seen software out there even that lets you find your second level connections and every time your first level connections get new ones it would tell you you know Joe has new contact you may want to connect with them so LinkedIn is actually doing that for you now So here's the modular layout I kind of mentioned with the economists. I follow them. They have good content. But you see everything is in boxes, separate content boxes. So it's a, a much cleaner look. And it's, I, I kind of like it. I'm getting used to it. It's like all these changes. It takes a while to get used to, but I'm finding it much better now. And now here, Stephen Moore has a new connection. If I wanted to connect with Will, I could view his profile and connect with him there. So they're making it much easier for you to connect to your second level connections now. Up in the top right corner, this is the way the people you may know or the what, what's happening in your network basically. So Kevin Stone has a new job and I can click on like there or I can comment and if I don't want to comment you can skip it and they give you 15 every day. You can go through those 15 and if you do that then they'll add 15 more but it's you know, a quick way to like. They didn't have the like feature before. You could just comment on it. But now if you click comment, you can do congrats, you know, the canned message. Don't do that. Customize it. Make it seem like you actually want to congratulate the person. So I use a tool on my Mac called Text Expander where you can put messages in with a couple of keystrokes. You can put, you know, pre-written messages in and then customize it for that person. So it's a a really good way you could knock out all 15 of those and comment on them in literally a couple minutes and actually you know really write something thoughtful so here's how we improve your profile you just hover over that they make it really easy to get to that now you can still get to it under the profile menu item but this way is a quick way to do it and then here's the thing they've been rolling out for a while if you want to change your name field if you want to change your industry, just click on the pencil and you can edit that field directly to make it much easier to update your profile. Also, they've added that background image. I added this and it's my profile views have skyrocketed since that, since I added that. And it literally cost me $5 on Fiverr to get this banner created. So it's a great investment. It gives you a lot of real estate where you can get your message across and let people know how you can help them. Here's another, this is a cool feature because when you're editing your profile you can actually view what your connections see because when you're in editing mode you don't get to see it, what other people see. So you can select connections or the public profile which is the one that shows up on Google and for people that are not logged into LinkedIn. So that doesn't show your banner but it shows a lot of information about your profile that you control in your settings. So here's people who viewed your profile. This is a gold mine of information because I've been doing direct marketing for over 12 years. My whole objective for the last 12 years, I kind of have this mindset, drive traffic to your website, search engine optimization, get people to view your website. And it's the same thing with LinkedIn and this really, reinforces that the more people that view your profile the bigger your network will get and the more customers you can get so it's I focus on getting more profile views by really putting intriguing things in my in my profile and grabbing people's attention I think still over 90 percent of people use their job title as a professional headline and that's the real estate where you grab their attention you can put your USP in there and a headline some way that you help people So here's who's viewed my profile over the last 90 days and I see I was traveling for three weeks and it drops off. So if I'm not consistently using LinkedIn, the profile drops significantly, very quickly. 
So I've been back home now and I've been focusing on you know, being more active on LinkedIn again. And what's cool is they tell you exactly what actions you're taking. Like here this week I've added eight connections and it tells you exactly you know, what actions, how many updates you've done, how, many, how much content you shared for other people, how many likes. So when you see activity increasing your profile views, you know you're doing the right thing. So lately, one of my strategies has been to get my book out there. I've been connecting with a lot of producers at NBC, CBS, ABC. I started with local television stations, connected with all the producers there, and then I connected with the anchor people and news directors, and then I've expanded that to the Today Show. And I haven't gotten any appearances yet, but I'm getting more and more people to view my profile. So just in the last week, Three viewers from CBS News viewed my profile and NBC Universal. So what I can do is I can look at those people who viewed my profile and reach out to them now. I've got their attention. Another strategy I've been working on lately is getting people at LinkedIn to notice me. I want to connect with people at LinkedIn, the right people, because they do a lot of workshops and presentations and I would love to present on their stage. So I've been focused on getting on LinkedIn's radar and it's actually worked because on Twitter, they started following me and they've been retweeting a lot of my content that I've been posting about LinkedIn. So if you have a really clear strategy for LinkedIn, you can get tremendous results. And really, I only spend maybe 15 to 30 minutes a day on LinkedIn promoting my own business. I'm on LinkedIn most of the day helping clients, but my actual marketing time is 15 to 30 minutes a day. And if you have a clear strategy, it works like crazy. So here's people from LinkedIn that have viewed my profile and got their attention. So there's a salesperson, financial service sales, customer success consultant. So I've got their attention. I've got their Twitter people following me now and retweeting my content, which is great. And then you can even search by location. So here, this is what happens after you connect with people. I connected to Jamie Brill. Let me go back to that. So here I sent a connection request to Jamie Brill and I couldn't customize the message, which I really wanted to do, but I couldn't. But then it took me to this screen and then it tells you, these are people you may know based on her. And it's interesting, there's not actually any LinkedIn people here. You think it'd be a little better than that, but you still have to kind of play with it. The LinkedIn algorithm is still, they're fine tuning it. And they, sometimes there's things their interface isn't as direct as I'd like it to be. Like here, I'd rather see people you know that are at LinkedIn because I've focused on that. But hopefully they'll get there. So here with your profile, those these are companies that have been viewing it. I connected with a lot of people at Keller Williams too recently. Real estate people are interested in using LinkedIn, so I've been working with some realtors. So that's kind of taking off too. They can also look by geography. So 69 people in New York viewed my profile, 314 in San Francisco, that's where I live. So it's, it gives you so much information. And if you have the premium account, even the lowest level premium account, you get more information here. So this is really gold. It helps you save time because all your activity on LinkedIn, if you have that clear strategy, you can see what's working and what's not working. And when you're connecting, like I've connected with six people at NBC Universal last week, my ultimate goal is to get on the Today Show, one of the big news shows, become their LinkedIn expert. So here are the people in the greater New York area, and I was just in New York a couple weeks ago. If I would have had time, I was more, it was a vacation, but I could have actually reached out to these people and said, send them a message saying, I'm coming to New York, I'd love to have a cup of coffee with you, get to know you, learn more about what you do. And I've had actually, a friend of mine did that, he was going to Washington, D.C. He did a similar thing, and he got a speaking engagement in New York, in Washington, D.C., while he was going on vacation. So he got to write off the whole trip, got his trip paid for, actually, by the people at the conference because they had a last-minute cancellation of a speaker. So it's a great way to get speaking engagements or, you know, meet people when you're, you're in their area. So then to tell you about job titles too, I had 107 CEOs and executive directors view my profile, 91 consultants. So 
this is really good information because you know if you're targeting certain job titles or industries this really tells you what's working what's not working does anyone do this for their profile I'd like to see that they the who's viewed your profile because it's it's a gold mine of information I just can't stress it enough So then I can drill down. Here's viewers, the 91 people with title consultant. I've worked with a lot of consultants, and here there's 359 in marketing and advertising industry. So it really tells you what job titles, what industries. If I want to find new clients to manage their online advertising, these are the people I'm looking for. Here's another new feature. I've haven't done as much posting as I should publishing content LinkedIn publisher came out last year and it's where you can put full blog posts full articles on LinkedIn that show up in the pulse section if you're lucky enough to get picked up and I've been kind of experimenting with that a little bit and I think I've really cracked that code but I gotta do more testing I have lots of content I need to post I need to have my assistant actually start posting it for me because I know some people that get 10 to 20 to 50,000 views of their posts now, which really expands your audience and really gets your expertise out there to a lot of people. But they're giving really detailed stats on, you know, who's viewing your content. And these are people that liked it. So there's 25 people like this one. And they give you a chart. It shows I posted this a long time ago. Here's what's really cool. It tells you the demographics of the people that read your article. So 30% marketing of advertising, job titles, where they're located, and their top traffic sources. So you know, I get 12% of the people that read my article found it on Facebook because I posted a link to it on Facebook. So this is great information to really help you hone in and spend 15 to 30 minutes a day on LinkedIn and get results. We all know how much time we can waste on social media. So here's the people that liked it. 25 people liked it. And what I'll do, if they, I'm not connected with them, I'll connect with them. Or I'll reach out to these people and I'll thank them. to say, hey, Steve, thanks for sharing my or liking my article. If they shared it or commented on it, I do the same thing. Here are the 13 people that commented on it. So I'll send them a personal message on LinkedIn and say, hey, thanks for commenting on my article. If they post content, I'll comment on theirs if I find it good content. And then here's four people that shared it. it only shows three so not sure exactly what happened here but these are people that actually shared my content and wrote a comment about it so definitely reach out to these people and thank them how you rank for profile views this has been around for a while but they're enhancing it more and more so what they do they take your profile and compare you against it used to be 190 now it's 98 members like you I don't know why they dropped from 100 to 98 but it kind of sees where you rank among your industry peers and then also among your connections and one of the things they took out in the latest update is it's really I can't really find out how many exactly how many connections I have now here it says I have 5,153 but I know I have a lot more than that so I'm not sure why they removed that feature if anyone knows let me know because I'd love to understand what their thinking is on that So here's where I view, I'm in, not sure exactly what number now. They used to tell you what number you were too, so I can jump to mine. But these are people in my connections that have the most viewed connections. So Tim Ferriss, Dave Kirpin, some big names there. I'd love to get to the top of this list. That can be one of my goals for next year. Here's how you share your updates now. They've made it a lot cleaner. You can share it with public or just your connections or you can do it public and Twitter too. So I usually share mine on Twitter and public unless certain images I'm added aren't showing up properly on Twitter. But you just kind of watch that when you put links and pictures in there because sometimes they don't carry over so the post doesn't look as clean as you want it to be. But they make it much easier to share updates here. So my update is different than a post update is like a big tweet basically I think it's 180 characters and it's just you know status update like on Facebook 
where a post is a full article or blog post. So here's where you can upload photos. If you're sharing quotes, definitely put the quote in a little graphic, a square graphic. I shared a Zig Ziglar quote a while back. I share those kind of quotes. If you put them in a banner, they get much more social interaction. People share them, liking, and comment. If it's just text, you won't get any interaction at all from it, or very little. So here's where you publish your post. You can do that from here or at the top on the menu items. They're giving you lots of ways to get to the same places to, to do this activity. And I highly recommend publishing content on LinkedIn. I've got to, like I said, I've been busy with my book, but now I can actually get this content posted because it shows up not only on LinkedIn in front of over 350 million people potentially, it shows up in Google search results. So when people Google your name, your articles from LinkedIn will show up there. So it's really powerful for driving more people to your profile and to your website and building your reputation. So here's, it's just like, kind of like WordPress. If you use WordPress, you put your headline, type your writing, and then they've added this tagging feature, which is a new feature. They didn't have that at first, where it's like when you do WordPress blogs, you can add tags or keywords that help it rank better and lets people find it easier with searches. So here's why you can edit your profile, who's viewed your profile, and you can see your updates now. So this is a feature they used to have in the sidebar where you could actually look at all your status updates that you did and see what kind of interaction you got. So here's my recent activity. I had 50 interactions, so I just posted this little article about my LinkedIn books, an excerpt from my book. I started a group discussion in my linked accelerators group. It just it tells you exactly what activities you've been doing, then also tells you how many people liked it, shared it, and commented on it, which is good information because it lets you know, you know what kind of content your audience wants to read. And here, this is the publisher again, so back to those same articles that I've posted, and you can view your stats on these. So I haven't had as much interaction. One of them had 915 views, 37 likes, and 26 comments. So really the goal is to get that into the thousands. But once you establish yourself, and I think I've figured out some good ways to make them really take off. And that's the kind of stuff we get deep into my LinkedIn classes. I don't really have time to get out. I could probably do a whole webinar on LinkedIn Publisher and show you all the tricks I've been learning from watching other people. And then here's more great information, your followers. So a follower, by default, all of your LinkedIn connections are followers of yours. And then people that may read your content, they can follow you without being connected to you. So that number should be higher. And I know I have over 6,000 connections on LinkedIn, or I did last time they showed me the stats. So I'm not sure why it's only showing 5,300. But you can save seniority, your industries, your regions. It's This is valuable. I guess I've been doing marketing and online advertising so long and tracking campaigns. I'm like really interested in this information because it tells me, gives me the answers about who's reading my content, who's resonating with it, who's sharing it, what industries I should focus on, what regions. So it's just a gold mine of information. It's like you hover over these little bubbles, 444 managers, are following me. 692 CXOs, 1,650 people senior in their title. Industries, marketing and advertising is the most because that's the industry I'm in. Then it tells you what regions. I had one client that they were getting a lot of interaction from Hawaii. So they did a seminar in Hawaii. Most of their interactions were coming from there. So they scheduled a workshop over there. They had a great time. So then here's the people actually, they're following me. It gives you a list of everybody that's following you. So if you're not connected with them, you can reach out to them. And I'm surprised here. This is one of the things they should say if you're connected here or not. I think I'm connected with most of these people, but this is one of those gaps 
in the LinkedIn interface, like, why don't they tell us if we're following them or not, and make it easy to interact with them. Like, I could make, put a comment, though, or send them a message saying, hey, Greg, thanks for following me and, you know, reading my content. So there's little things like that. It would be really nice to have, and hopefully they add that in the future. Okay, let's take some questions here. Anybody have questions on that section? There's just so many changes that are coming so fast. So Connie wants to know, how do you get to know who looked at your posts? And that's under the Who's Viewed Your Profile tab. It's the third tab over. Larry wants to know, is premium worth it? Yes, I do the $29 a month business account. I've tested Sales Navigator, and that's just it's more tool than I need for my business. But with premium, they give you more of that information about who's viewing your profile and who's viewing your content. So it lets you get a more complete picture. And also another big advantage of the LinkedIn premium, there is this, a feature called the open link network. So you can actually email people through LinkedIn that are in the open link network that are other premium members. So you don't have to use, it makes it easier to connect. You don't have to use in mails. So here, I saw some are you limited to 5,000. No, there's, there used to be a limit. You could only send 3,000 invitations to people, connection requests. And I, I've gone way past that. I know I have. I'm, I don't think there's that limit anymore. They've really changed things. And I, I've heard if you hit that limit, they will just kind of view your profile, make sure you're a legitimate person. And they just increase that. So I've never run into that limitation. I think 20,000 or 30,000 is the maximum connections you can have. I'm a long way from that. I really just started growing my network in the past year. I always kept it small because I didn't want a lot of noise. But I'm finding the value of getting it bigger. So let's keep going here. We've got lots of questions. I can answer the rest at the end. We've got lots of content to cover it. Education and recruiting is another huge area LinkedIn's really taken off. So what they've done is they've always had this alumni section, which they enhanced a lot. But now they've got U University, University, and they're actually going after getting high school kids to sign up for LinkedIn, and then they choose what colleges they want to potentially go to, and they follow them. Then the universities can go and see who's following and maybe potential students. So University is actually trying to recruit high school students that are on LinkedIn. So if you have a child that's high school age, tell them to get on LinkedIn and fill out their profile because university is trying to use that to recruit. And then as you go through university, companies are starting to recruit people on LinkedIn before they even graduate. My son graduated last year, and he's got a full-time job, but he's getting contacted by recruiters. And he, when he was in college, he was getting contacted by recruiters a lot before he graduated. So LinkedIn's kind of seen this big picture. So they're taking people from high school through college and into their careers and then changing jobs to their careers. So they've got the complete application here. So if you want to recruit for your company too, you can use this to recruit really good, high quality people right out of school. So here you would follow universities and I haven't filled any of this out, but you can create, you know, what you want to study, create a decision board, lots of tools here for people that are looking to get into college. And then they have the university rankings, best schools for marketers, for different things. So you can look at these rankings depending what field you want to go into, and LinkedIn is ranking them for you. So you start with the university, this kind of takes you whole through the process. It's, it's pretty interesting. Then you build your profile, they give you tips on getting more colleges to look at your profiles or potential employers. And here's the student job portal. Here's people you can get internships. This is just a gold mine because my son got an internship between his junior and senior year of college and he got offered a job. So his whole senior year, he knew he had a great job waiting for him. And then there's alumni tool. The alumni section is a gold mine. I mean, if you want referrals, connect with people. I went through this in other webinars. I won't go through it today, but 
you look at where you went to college or what schools you've gone to, it tells you other people that graduated from there, where they're working, what industry they're in, their job titles, it tells you a lot of information. So if you want to get into a company or reconnect with people, alumni will introduce you to people like crazy because there's that bond because you went to the same school. So here's the recruiter and check-in. So they just, they've got the whole complete thing. Recruiter, high school, college, recruiter, and then more and more jobs as your career evolves. Then they have a new thing, LinkedIn check-in. They're coming out with lots of new tools like this. Some of them are on mobile apps, some aren't, but you can check that out. I won't get into great detail about that, but it's more for the college students and checking, getting them. So now let's get into the ninja strategy. This is how I get over 100 targeted leads every week automatically. I kind of didn't discover this by mistake. It's just a tool they added, and it's, you need the premium account for this. So what I get is with the $29 a month, I get five saved searches I can do. I'll show you how I do this. So let's start. Here's the sales navigator. I was using it for a few months. I tested it out. And what it does, it lets you follow companies and then follow people in that company that you want to connect with or do business with. It's like every time Lisa Waters would post something, it would notify me. So I could look at her content. I could like it, share it, and comment or reach out to her and you know personally say, hey, that was a great article you posted. So it's a great tool for, you know, you need a bigger, I'm just, me as my business and one assistant. So I really don't need this power, but it's really powerful for sales reps. And you can actually interact with other sales reps. You can get a team account and interact with other people. So if you're, you know, multiple people working on large accounts, you can see who's been connecting with people and interacting with people so you don't duplicate the effort. So. If you're in sales, it's really it's a powerful tool. And I think it's like $65 a month if you pay annually, which is crazy. It's less than $800 a year. And it just makes your prospecting really, really easy on LinkedIn. So here's something I discovered by mistake. Have you ever tried to scroll to the bottom of LinkedIn? It just keeps scrolling endlessly over. You, know, you just can't get to the footer. I was trying to find some information about their premium accounts one day. And I just could not get to the bottom. It's like, this is crazy. So I logged out. And at the bottom, there's all this information. They have all these links to great information. So the only way you can get to it is by logging out. And I discovered this one little tab called Titles. So it has job titles. I'm a nerd about this. I, I admit it. I love this stuff. It's just finding data and information. But you can actually browse by job titles, by name, by company, or by region. So say I want to connect with someone at LinkedIn in the sales department. They may have very specific job titles at HP that aren't industry-wide. So what you can do is actually search for Hewlett Packard all the job titles. Then you can just drill down into this information. That's so literally everything people have typed in for job titles at the companies it's listed here. So, you know, it's kind of clunky. It's a lot of information. You have to scroll through it. But here you can just drill right down and find very specific job titles that let you prospect and find these people that, you know, they may be deep in the company. If you search for a sales professional, a sales executive, you may not find these people or a vice president of sales. So you find the company you want to target, you drill down and find the exact job titles they're using, and then you can do searches on LinkedIn and find these people. So here's the advanced people search. This is tons of great information. So what I've done here is I just use keyword sales. I could put that specific job title in the title field, but I just wanted to set up a more general search. So I just put keyword sales, company Hewlett Packard, first, second, and third, or first, second group members. And I did job titles. Actually, I did CXO, VP, and I think manager level. And what you do, you run this search, and here there's 54,000 report results for people that have sales in their job title or in their profile. This is for the VP, CXO, or manager level. So these are people I could contact if I wanted to get into HP and teach salespeople how to use LinkedIn more effectively. So what I do, 
I can start reaching out to these people. I can connect with, you know, Tim Glenn. I can view their profile. But what I would rather do, I save this search. So up in the upper right-hand corner, you can save these searches. So here I name this one HP Sales because it's very specific to HP. And every week, LinkedIn will give me leads. It tells me here's more people that meet the search criteria. I've got one set up for sales executives, so it's of general, it's not specific company. And I, I get about 50 to 75 every week of that. Coaches, I get about 60 to 70. And sales manager, very specific sales manager title, I should get about 40 to 50 a week. And these run, I can do five of these searches with the premium account. And they run automatically and they tell me exactly who these people are. And I can just reach out to these people and connect. And it says all, oh, you need the premium account, $29 a month. It's just amazing how effective it is. So here I've got the HP sales. I can do up to five with mine. And I can upgrade to a bigger account, pay more money and get more searches. But this is plenty for me. But like here we've got, this is the results. Second level connections, VP or manager, and it, it's tons of great information. So if, say I want to connect with Peter, I can look at his profile here, say, okay, this is somebody I'd want to connect with. Maybe I could help them work with his team and teach him how to use LinkedIn more effectively. I could send him an in-mail, which I don't think I've ever sent an in-mail on LinkedIn. I've never had to. I could reach out and connect with him. Or I can view through his profile and find more information about him. And what I notice here, I have 19 shared connections. So instead of me blindly trying to reach out to him, like just picking up the phone and cold calling him, I'm going to look and see who his shared connections are. So here's 19 people that I'm connected with. So I could go to Niall and say, hey, Niall, can you introduce me to Peter? I'd like to learn more about him, you know, connect with him. Or I can go Lori Ruff or Graham. Just reach out to those people and say, could you introduce me? Because you know what it's like when somebody introduces you, you've already got your foot in the door because they're recommending you. If you just blindly try to connect with them, they're not going to know you from Adam. They get you know, hundreds of connection requests every month probably. So you take this approach and you really get your foot in the door. Is that helpful for anybody? That's just, it's $29 a month for this. I get one client out of this, it pays for itself for multiple years. So it's it's crazy. And LinkedIn is not good at teaching how to use this stuff. And I think a lot of it's my marketing background and I've been in high tech. I love to just kind of reverse engineer things and figure out stuff, how to work it. But LinkedIn is just a gold mine of information and very, very few people know how to use it like this. So it's a, a good time for you to really get good at this before the rest of the world figures it out. So let's take some questions here. Anybody have questions on that section? David wants to know how you view your, improve your profile strength. You want to get to that all-star level. And basically, you just keep filling out more sections of your information. Just fill out your summary. Make sure your summary is complete, your education, your job history. The more information you fill out, the higher you'll go on that. And then you'll get to that magic level. So let's get some more questions here. So what's a good schedule for postings for a week, Larry asks. What I've done, actually, I hired someone to take my LinkedIn and Twitter books and create excerpts that I schedule as posts. And I schedule those in Hootsuite. So every day, I've got posts going out to Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and they're different posts. And then they link to my website to download free chapters or to buy my book. And I've got those all scheduled in Hootsuite over and over and over. There's hundreds of these posts I had created. And then I also go in and spend the 15 to 30 minutes a day interacting live on LinkedIn. And sometimes I'll do it throughout the day just so it's not like I do it all in the morning or afternoon. It just it's works really, really well to get your name out there. So... The schedule, you know, the more content you can post, the better. Some of those people that that were ahead of me for profile views in that chart, I know the top person, she has four to five posts every hour go on LinkedIn. So she's just pounding content on there. 
and she's getting more profile views. So, you know, it's, I wouldn't worry about overdoing it if you have great content because that, you know, everybody's not going to see every post you do, but you're going to catch their attention more often. So David wants to know, do I post an article, a white paper to my LinkedIn page? I thought I did that, but I can't find it. Yeah, so you want to go into that publisher and post it there. You can also add content in your profile itself. Like if you post it on SlideShare or you can put YouTube videos, you can post that within your summary and different job titles too. There's ways to do that. and I have videos on how to do that and teach that in my LinkedIn classes. That's really powerful because it lets people get a sense on your expertise. So you don't have to reach out to them. They kind of browse it and find that information. But the articles and things use the LinkedIn publisher. So here, is it better to write your summary in the first or third person? That's, that's a great question because I've seen it both ways. I've seen it more effective. My theory of that is I use my summary to get to know people, let them get to know me. I ask them a question right up front so you're not getting enough leads on LinkedIn or Facebook or whatever. I ask a question that I know is one of their big pain points. And I say, you know, here's how I can help you. And I invite them to connect and do a 30-minute consultation with me. And then I go in and tell my story and how I got to where I am in my career. So they get to know me. So I need to build that relationship. A lot of people just repeat their experience section in the summary, which is repetitive. And, you know, when you meet someone in person at a networking event or at a conference, when they come up and they start talking about themselves, you're not interested in them. But if they come up and start asking you questions about you, put the focus on you, you build a relationship with them. You like that person. You've, you've all heard those stories where people will just sit there and ask you 10 questions and they never say a word. And you say, that guy is the greatest guy. So focus on them in the summary and how you can help them. And I find I get much better results in that. So what is a way you can get content added to LinkedIn? I was guess, yeah, re repost articles. You can go into Pulse, LinkedIn Pulse. There's lots of news items there and lots of articles other people have written. You can comment, like, and share those. And people love it when you share their content. More times than not, they'll actually send you a message saying, hey, thanks for sharing my content. It's a great way to build relationships. Focus on helping others. That's kind of my motto in life. I just, the more people I help, the better my life is. I enjoy it. I just really love helping people. So I spend most of my time helping others, and it all comes back multiple. So I'll take a couple more questions here, then we'll do big questions at the end. So access has been restricted on mobile devices. Uh-oh. <laughs> That's another thing. If you try to connect with too many people, you got to kind of do everything in moderation on LinkedIn. Don't overdo it. Because if you do too much of it, if too many people say, I don't know you, when, they, when you connection request them, there's a, a threshold there. And LinkedIn will warn you. They'll say, you have too many I don't knows. Because they don't want people just spamming people and building their networks uncontrollably. They really want to try to keep it business to business or person to person. So they'll warn you, and then if you get past that threshold, they will actually make you enter their email address for every person you try to connect to for a while. And then after a while, when you get that ratio back down, you have to connect with people you definitely know will accept for a while, and that will get them get that threshold back, and they'll release that restriction. So this is good information. I hope you're learning something. It's just so much. I can talk for days on this. I love this stuff. It's crazy. <laughs> I'm a nerd. I admit it. So who's ready for some more? It's more information about LinkedIn. It's endless. So think about what's a new client worth to your business. I ask this every time I do a talk somewhere or I teach classes. I ask people, and gosh, most people don't know. Is it $1,000? If, if I hired you right now, how much would I pay you initially? And then also through the lifetime of a relationship. Is it $1,000, $10,000, $100,000? 
I have clients that have bought a $7 ebook from me and that's all we've ever done. And I have other clients that have paid me close to a million dollars over a four or five year period. So, you know, there's, there's a number in there that your average new customer will be worth to your business. So I really highly recommend figuring that out because it's, it's critical because that you can, if you make a hundred thousand dollars from every client over the lifetime, you can spend more money marketing and getting more clients in the funnel. If a client is only worth a little bit, it's not worth it. So I have a linked accelerate class. I've done it last year. Over 500 people did it. I was really honored that many people took this class, but I have a strategy. It's I'm kind of the only person that teaches it this way. There's some similar, a little similar, but I really focus on, you know, having this five step method really. Create your LinkedIn strategy. What's your intent? Are you trying to sell more? Are you trying to get more leads? Are you trying to grow your network? What's your LinkedIn strategy? How many people do you want? I like to work with only four or five clients at a time. Some people want to work with 500 clients at a time. So you need to know that strategy and use LinkedIn effectively because then you can go in 15 to 30 minutes a day and get really good results. Then we talk about building your LinkedIn foundation and that's where we optimize your profile and that's where I like to really I did a lot of search engine optimization so I know how to get ranked really well on LinkedIn and I also know how to get people's attention with my you know my direct marketing background that professional headline is the key to success on LinkedIn because that shows up everywhere it's like your own personal Google ad that follows people all over LinkedIn then we talk about the strategies for building your LinkedIn network for the longest time I had a network of about 1500 people and I didn't want it bigger because I didn't I thought it'd be too noisy now I'm at the other approach I want to get to 10,000 by the end of the year now well now they don't tell me I'm not sure when I'll get there but really do you want a big network a small network some businesses really need just a really a close-knit network other people want to connect with thousands of people if you're a recruiter in sales you want to cast a wider net so we talk about you know, what's the best strategy for your business and then we talk about LinkedIn, using it to become the industry authority. And that's what I do by pumping my content out there, some automatically, some manually, and then interacting with the right people. So hopefully with me reaching out to all these people at the news producers, I'll get on some of these television shows, but I've got that strategy and that's kind of my mission right now. Let them think I am the authority. I've got the you know, best-selling book on Amazon, I've trained lots of people on LinkedIn, so I really want to become their go-to person. So that's what we help you do, establish yourself as an industry authority. And then we get into advanced LinkedIn strategy, and like these ninja tricks. That's just one of many things that I do. I, I really dig deep into how these things work, and my wife thinks I'm crazy, but <laughs> I just love this. It's like hobbies for me, playing. So I just I know all these ways to generate these. I've been doing this for over 30 years, so I know how to build relationships. I know how to use these advanced tools and really simplify it and make it easy for people to use. So Elizabeth, I'm in a mastermind group with her and I helped her optimize her profile. And she got in with Sherman Williams to speak and actually last year she spoke at over 150 places and she charges three to $5,000 for every speech. So optimizing her LinkedIn profile got her a lot more speaking engagements and she's just She's actually can't take out any more work. She's working, just traveling constantly, but she's just killing it. She's really amazing. She's a black, former Black Hawk Army pilot, and she's got so many inspirational stories. Craig, I've been working with for a while, and he took one of my classes, one of the first classes, and he was starting from scratch, and he's added lots of connections. He's up, actually, he's in the top 5% of pros like me now. And we put some of his ads, we did some LinkedIn advertising, and he actually started getting some really good results from it. So that's not easy to do with LinkedIn. And Andy Hughes took one of my classes last year, and they do consulting. They have zero software. They're a distributor for that. And they help attorneys. They focused on attorneys. They're trying to sell to all small businesses. We got them to focus on just attorneys, so they help them with all their accounting needs. So they outsource their accounting to Andy. And He's seeing tremendous value in LinkedIn. So here's the five power pack sessions. It's my own unique strategy. I don't know anybody else that teaches this methodology, but 
it's working really well. So last year I did a $10,000 coaching program with Frank Kern. He's one of the top internet marketers on ever. He generates millions of dollars for his clients. And I gave him a copy of my book and he goes, dude, you wrote this whole book by yourself. He's a surfer dude from Southern California. He just couldn't believe I wrote the whole book and he was just so impressed with it. And he took, you know, went through my program that you got to charge 5,000 bucks for this because it's so much information and people can make so much money from LinkedIn if they approach it with your approach. So I should charge that, but I'm only charging $497 because last year I trained 500 people, about 520. And my goal this year is to train 5,000. So I, would, I love to keep the price point low. I like to have more interaction in the classes, get more people involved, because there's so much information to share and learn. So I keep a really low price point. So if you're interested, it's tedpadromo.com slash ninja. The class is starting. We'll be starting next week, actually. So what we do, we, we do a video every week that you watch at your pace. Then we have weekly Q&A sessions. But wait. There's a VIP because a lot of people want more one-on-one -on -one time with me. So I offer two hours of one-on-one -on -one coaching with me and the complete program. So you get five weeks of the course with five group calls, and then you get four 30-minute sessions with me on top of that. And that's only $9.97, and I usually charge $500 for one session. So I just want to help more people. There's so many things you can do with LinkedIn, and I just really want to help as many as I can. And here's my crazy guarantee. All my mentors say you're nuts for doing this, but I guarantee you'll work, we'll work together until you close at least one new client. So if the client's worth $10,000 to you or you know, $100,000, we'll work together until you get that. And I've never had anyone take me up on this guarantee. So bonus time. So the first 10 people, I'll also throw in the LinkedIn profile makeover. And I charge 297 bucks for that. I do a video of your LinkedIn profile before I know really what you do. And I kind of guess what you do. If it's not clear, I'll just say, well, this is what I think you do. Is this correct? And I go through every, every section of your profile. And then we get on a 30-minute call together. And we, we talk about how to optimize your profile so people know instantly how you can help them. And everybody will get autographed copy of my book, which was on Amazon for number one in three categories for five straight weeks. So thank you for everyone that purchased that book. And it's still doing very well. So here's what you get. It's 497 bucks for the basic course. It's five weeks. And it's like a one to one and a half hour video every week and then hour to hour and a half group call, depending on how many questions we have. And then VIP, you get more consulting time with me. Okay, time for that free gift. Now, one of the questions, I'm thinking, the, let's do numbers 5, 10, and 15 that answer this question correctly. Make it really easy. How many members does LinkedIn have right now, approximately? Just type it in the chat window, and number 5, 10, and 15 that answer it correctly will get free a $297 profile makeover where I'll do the video for you and then we'll do a 30 minute call together. So how many LinkedIn members are there approximately right now according to LinkedIn? Awesome, we've well, got lots of questions, lots of answers here. Excellent. So we're starting next week. The first video will probably be going out over this weekend actually. If you're interested, go to tedpadromo.com and Ninja. I'd love to have you on there and help me get to my goal of training 5,000 people. If you have any more questions, let's get some more questions. I've got lots of questions. I'll answer a couple more questions and then we'll let you go because we don't want to run over time too much. So Chris wants to know about acquiring clients in a local area. That's easy with the advanced search. You can set up the searches and just target by zip code, like in your, your local area. And if, you know, job titles, local businesses. Literally, every large company is on there. I don't know what size companies you're targeting, but 
you know, if you have a small company too, you need to have a company page on LinkedIn because that company page shows up on Google search results. So it helps your company, your business name, show up in Google search results too. So yeah, you can do those searches in, they, I don't think they limit it by how many miles anymore. But you just put in the zip code and different zip codes you want to target. That works really well. So, so the premium members, people want to know what you get the premium membership. You get more analytical information, so all that information of who's viewing your profile, and that's the tricks we teach. Like, if you want to connect with somebody, you find them in the search, and if you view their profile, a lot of times they'll look at your profile. And if you have your profile optimized, they're going to see right instantly how you can help, potentially help them. And that's really what I focus on in building the profile. It's all about how we can help them. It's not about me and where I went to school. That's covered in the experience and education sections. They can scan through that. But in the summary and at the professional headline, that's where I really want to grab their attention, like an ad or a magazine article that you read. Look at like Oprah Magazine. On the cover, there's all these headlines that grab your attention and make you want to buy the magazine. That's how I treat a LinkedIn profile. Grab their attention, build the trust through the summary, and then your expertise, your education, all comes out in the experience and education section. So it's kind of my methodology, how that works. And being in direct marketing for 12 years, I've run a few ads and know what works and what doesn't work. A lot of questions about the premium. Okay, looks like a lot of repeated. So the way to get content to add LinkedIn, yeah, that's in the, the publisher. Or you can actually do the status updates and link it to your blog, a blog post on your website, and add images to it. Always add images to your posts because you get much more interaction. Even if you have it in text, if you put a quote up there or an excerpt from your book, put it in an image and you'll get lots more interaction. Okay, so I'll reach out to the people that went. Let's see what we got. Wow, quite a few. I'll have to go through this. There's lots of them. So I'll email you or call you directly if you're one of the winners. Looks like we've got lots of, lots of entries here. And it looks like the questions are all pretty much the same. So, yeah, lots of questions about publishing on LinkedIn and how to get them read. It's one thing to publish on there. Another thing is to get them read. And, that's what we'll be covering in the class. So thank you, everybody. And I'll be posting the recording, and I'll post the slides, too. I'll be sending an email out to everybody. And thank you for attending. I hope you all join us on the class. I'd love to have you. Thank you.